Hi everyone. Today we will learn about transformer library. We will see how to use pre-trained model from transformers to perform a task like sentiment analysis, question answering, summarization, etc. So the first thing we need to install transformer library using a pip install. If you have it already installed, then it will not install it again. And one of the easiest thing in the transformer library is called the pipeline API. Using this pipeline API, we can simply specify the kind of task we want to perform and it does support a multiple task. And we can go to the documentation and learn more about, you know, what kind of a different task it supports. But for now, let's think of, let's say we want to do a sentiment analysis. So in the pipeline, we can simply specify the task that we want to perform. And if you are on GPU, you can you know, put a GPU device ID. Here it is a zero. If you don't specify, it will run on a CPU. And once you have the sentiment classifier from the pipeline, you can pass a sentence and it can do a prediction on it. You could see now, it started downloading something and if you could read the what you know here you could see that since we didn't supply the model which should be used for sentiment analysis is defaulted to this particular model so when we don't specify the model id here for the sentiment analysis task it will use the default model and you can go and see what is the default model so this is the one of the model in the Hugging Face Hub, you can see the details about that model and even you can try that model here itself. Like you can, you know, simply put any sentence here and you can, you know, test it here itself. Now you could see since the model got downloaded, which is inside this classifier and then we can pass any sentence that it will try to predict a sentiment and you could see the output in the down here. You could see it has predicted the label is positive and the score or the confidence associated with you can say it's more than 99 percent it is sure that this is a positive text so overall this is how pipeline architecture works it abstract out you know it will abstract out certain complexities you as a user but it does a lot of things behind the uh, scene right so if you think of what's happening behind the scene is that you know you have your raw text which is what we print here you know which is what we put here that first needs to go through a tokenizer the tokenizer is something which will you know process your text and convert into the bunch of numbers you can think of this like you know vector of those numbers and then those vectors will be given to the model then model will generate some logic some raw values for your classes if you have two classes it will be, you know, one value for, you know, zeroth class, the other value for your first class. In our case, it could be positive or negative sentiment. And then finally, those logits can be again do some post processing to get you the predictions. So you could do some normalization, apply some soft max on it. And finally, you get the prediction. So these all these things happening behind the scene. So when you simply use pipeline and only specify the task that you want to perform, you are not specifying any model name. You don't care about how this text needs to be, you know, pre-processed before we give it to the model. Okay. And then even after model produces the output, you could see nicely what is exactly the prediction. But under the hood, these all steps has, you know, happened. So today what I am going to show you is how to use this pipeline for a different task. But in the next video, I am going to show you these steps, what the pipeline does we could do it manually using PyTorch or we can use transform in the PyTorch where you could see how can we take our text, we tokenize it ourselves, pass through the model, take the output from the model and then do a post processing on top of it. So you get more flexibility and control on that behavior. And the next video, we're going to see that thing. But for now, stick to this particular uh, pipeline. Now here, as you could see, this line that we didn't specify the model, that's why it is defaulted to particular model. So definitely we can specify which model they should use. And there are many models available. If you go to the hugging face and if you click on the models here, right? And then you will see a lot of different tasks. So using this task, you can filter the model. 
So let me expand this task. You can see you have here computer vision task. Then you have a natural language processing task. Inside this natural language processing, you can think of our sentiment analysis should be a text classification you know, task because what we are doing actually, we are giving a text and we are classifying it to whether it's a positive or negative or it could be the neutral, depends on the model. And you could see there are 10,000 models which can be used for the text classification purpose. And this is one of the topmost model you could see here, which has highest download. But this is the one second in this list is what actually Hugging Face is using. This is the model it is using as a default model. So what we will do, we will specify our own model that should be used and not the default model. So the next step, what we will do, you know, we predicted some positive. This is where we can, you know, predict some negative score also. Now we will specify the task, but we will also specify which model that it should use. So you can go to the hugging face repo here. You might like some particular model which has trained, let's say on similar data set, what you are using, or you have done some experiment here and you found that this particular model works better for you compared to the default model what we have. So you just need to copy this particular model name that you want to use and you can specify in this here. And then transformer will download this particular model for the purpose of doing a sentiment analysis and all things remain the same. Okay, now you see the output is something different. When we use the default model, it is used to predict something like negative or a positive with their score. But if you look at this particular output, when we change the model, which is here, output is something labeled to, then what is this label to, which has some 97% probability or something like that. To understand that thing, we need to go to the place where we use that particular model. So let's go here and look at the model description. And in the model description, it says that actually the label zero is actually negative. The label one is a neutral and the label two is a positive. So what we got here, we got label two, which seems to be positive. So, and our sentence was also positive. So when you use any different model other than the default model, make sure you understand the, you know, uh, what those labels means here. Just like we gave a one example here, we could give a list of example. We can do a batch prediction. We can do multiple examples, right? You have to simply specify this multiple example. Again, this pipeline architecture is taking care of all this processing and you are not worried about, you know, tokenizing it, this, all these things. And finally, you could see now the prediction also, we got a list, a list of two prediction. The first example, we got label two, which is positive. And the second, we got the label zero, which seems to be a, negative thing. So this is how you perform any task. And you can perform a mini task, right? As I told you, you can go to simply, let's go to the model section here. And you can perform any of the natural language processing tasks available here, including question answering, text summarization, all of them. Today, I'm going to show you some of them, this particular task, but the process remains the same. You come here, you read about them, and it should be easy. So let's focus on the next task. So we saw sentiment analysis. Now let's say, how do we do a question answering task? So the question answering task here, again, you change the task name. We are putting device as a zero because we are using GPU. If you don't know how to, uh, you know, in Colab, you have to go to the runtime and you can check, you know, change runtime. And you could see you have your GPU, TPU, or even none, which is the CPU. Currently I have selected the GPU option, right? That is the reason I'm able to pass this device is equal to zero here. Now to do a question answering, it requires two things. One is the context from which we want to answer something and the question that we would like to ask. So here context is, I'm, I'm putting here like, my name is Pradeep and I'm, I work as a freelancer. This is the context. Now given this context, I can ask a question, who is Pradeep? And then let's say, what does it answer? Again, we didn't supply any particular model name. That is the reason it started, you know, using some default model. So if I go here, you can read about what default model. So for, you know, question answering, this is the default model it is using. You can read more about that particular model. This, this we call a model card, which talks about who has developed this model, right? What data set has been used? What is the benchmarking or even what were the 
hyper parameters, all this information you can get here. And even you could get how to use that model programmatically, right? That is something also you can get here. So let's look at what we got when we pass through the question answer pipeline and we got something answer as a freelancer because it tried to find the answer inside this context, which is correct. And it also gives you the starting and the end location of that answer inside this string. So it is saying that the answer is somewhere starting from 32 or 42. Right? This is, this is how things works. Now we can ask the different question also. Let me ask this question. Right? So I ask where does Pali work? Uh, let's say what it says. If you see this time it didn't download it because we have that model already downloaded. That is the reason you see direct answer here, which is saying upward. That is also correct. So this is how you could use, you know, uh, question answering task. Now let's look at the other task. Now we have this task, name entity recognition, NER task, right? Again, in the pipeline, we specify we want to perform an NER task. And then we simply pass example to this pipeline and let's execute and see what happens. Okay, you could see an output here and you could see it has predicted certain word as a person. This stands for inside person, a, you know, the way notation of entity work, but you can think of whatever it has predicted, it says it is a person, it is a person and you see multiple things. Why? Because this name got broken into the multiple tokens and that is why for each token it is predicting that this seems to be a person entity, this seems to be an organization entity. But this is difficult to read and we know that these multiple tokens are actually belong to just one entity. So what we can do, we can set this another parameter called the aggregation strategy is a simple. You can read more about if you search this pipeline any on the read base. In simply what it does, it actually going to aggregate those multiple tokens and which is we know that is a single entity. Let's see what is the result here. Now you could see, right? So we have totally two entities from this particular text. One is the person, which is Sundar Pichai. And the other one is the Google, which is an organization. So all the tokens, different tokens, what Sundar Pichai was representing, they got into the just one aggregated into the one thing. And that is what this particular parameter does. Let's move on to our next task called a summarization task. Again, in the summarization task, we just need to provide a text that we want to summarize. And we can also specify the summary length. We want minimum 10 token and the maximum 30 token. That's what uh, it will do. Let's run this thing. Again, it started downloading. Seems to be 1.2 GB model. What it is, you know, downloading currently. Most of the examples what I have taken actually they you know came from this particular you know hugging face course you can go read more about this is what they talk about you know what is the behind the pipeline and there are other things actually you know you can see what are the different nlp tasks here you know read more about how do we fine tune even i have created you know videos related to how to fine tune a transformer model so you can go and you know read more about all these things. Let me see whether it got downloaded or not. Yes, it got downloaded. And so this whole text got converted into this small summary, right? You could even specify the max length is 20 token and it will, you know, shorten this particular thing. So this is how, you know, summarization work. And the final thing we will see a text generation thing. So we will put a text generation task. Again, we want to do it with the GPU. And in the text generation, we have this generator, right? Which is nothing but this pipeline instance with this particular task. We just start with something. So we say that in this course, we will teach you how to, and let's see what model completes this particular sentence. And that's what the text generation task means. And we will also see which is the default model for this thing. You could see the default model for this is the GPT-2. Uh, 
okay i guess it generated this particular thing right so how does it complete it when we say in this course we will teach you how how to and then it's you know it is this is what it completed it says that use open cv to create your own open cv api from the source code and all these things right so you could do anything you might want to you know write a blog post you can just simply start with the theme of your blog and the text generation will you know take care of it it will start creating the content so these are the tasks uh, you know that there are multiple tasks right we saw there are many tasks you you can go and try those couple of tasks you can see for each task which is the popular model go read about that particular model try that model on the hugging face hub itself as i told you right once you go to that particular model in the right side you can perform some operation on that particular model and you can even read about the details of the task or the model so this is what i wanted to show you today the next video as i mentioned we are going to see how do we perform this task tokenizing model and post processing ourselves rather than using this pipeline models we are going to see how the transformer we can use into the pytorch so that we can perform those tasks and have much more flexibility uh, on this thing okay i have actually put all the videos that what i have created inside this playlist nlp beginner to advanced and you could see from building your first model to even the fine tuning transformer so here we have you know made a video of how to fine tune but i haven't created video that how to use this pre trained model that is the reason today i created this video that you know how to actually use this pre trained model and how to fine tune is that that i have already made a video that you can you know um, go and watch so i am going to create some two three videos inside this middle so that you know uh, we get some continuous flow up videos so if you want to start with nlp it will be good thing for you to continuously follow this thing and by the time you reach here you have all the skills to build and deploy this particular models and again if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe thank you